what is going on YouTube welcome back for another episode so in today's video uh, I'm actually going to be showing you how to um, gut the dizzy for the uh, coil unplug uh, coil unplug setup that I offer um, as well as the harness I'm going to show you what the harness looks like um, but yeah we're going to go ahead and get into it show you exactly how to gut it and what all needs to be removed and we'll go from there So right here, we just have, you know, a regular Dizzy, OBD2. So you just take off your uh, retaining screws for your dust cover. That's what this black piece is called, the dust cover. It's nothing, nothing too big, nothing too crazy. Just a dust cover. So uh, this is coming off a, a EM1. It's a Civic Si. So... Uh, this chick was having issues with um, her ignition not working so they tried two or three different um, deals from uh, I guess Amazon or whatever didn't work so kind of hard doing this with just one hand so bear with me So in order to do this, you got to take off your rotor. You have to take off the ICM. I don't know why I said ICM, this is your igniter, sorry. Hmm. Well, look at that. That's all tacoed out. Maybe that's probably why it ain't working. I have no idea. But, anyways, your igniter comes out. Set it right there. Now we'll get the uh, ICM. Take out the ICM. We don't want to do that. We we'll have to come over here and get a flathead. Put a flathead in there. I don't want to round off the uh, the Phillips heads. So uh, in the other video showed y'all a clutch. Well, remember how I said that I was gonna be working on my brother's car. Um. So look at his clutch. Look at that. The springs. The spring. Look at that. Tacoed out. That's what a lot of street racing does to you. You get a, you get hooked on that shit, and street racing is in the blood. So, you gotta get a flathead. Go back out there and uh, take off the uh, ICM. And then I'm gonna show y'all the harness and uh, excess wires that are left inside of the distributor. I'll just, you know, show you exactly what to do and we'll go from here. So I'll flip the camera around.
So there is the uh, Dizzy gutted. So with these excess wires right here, what you do is you just fold them up. Then I'll, what I usually do is just fold them up, put them together, zip tie them, double zip tie them maybe, and then set it back in here, and then zip tie it again. And they actually just sit in there, and that, that's all it is. So, on to bigger and better things. That's how you got the Dizzy for the uh, coil on plug system, okay? And here right here is the harness that I offer. Which is, I don't know if you can see exactly, but it's a, it's a nice abrasive um, loom. 3 to 1 heat shrink. It's all, uh, all the material that we use, the wire, it is all uh, uh, chemical and heat resistant. Um, actually uh, bought it from a company that uh, I guess uh, sells wire for uh, aircrafts. And uh, so you know this wire is good stuff pretty much just like OEM stuff you know heat resistant uh, chemical resistant stuff like that that way if you get chemicals on it it ain't gonna you know shrivel up and all that good shit but anyways this is the harness it's um, the, the harnesses that, that I make is are approximately seven to eight foot long give or take and uh, works on any chassis uh, you know EF DA DC2 EK EG um, Accords uh, Preludes um, whatever you have to use a OBD1 ECU for this for this uh, specific setup It only works on OBD1 ECUs But this is the harness Pretty pretty nice harness quality quality product. I mean you see all my heat shrink and everything like that It's not none of that cheap stuff that actually has a glue inside of it to keep everything you know pulled together You got your uh, four connectors right here OEM connectors you have a ground, which you have to ground out. You don't ground to the thermostat. You could ground to your chassis or to your uh, distributor cover. You ha you will, if you go to the distributor cover or to the distributor, you're going to have to waller out this, this little deal. You're going to have to ream it out. Um, this is for your power, your 12-volt source to power your, your coils. And then um, this little bad boy right here, blue, is for your tax signal. So on your on your harness, on your harness right here, this big black yellow, you will either depin, or you could splice into it, whichever whichever works best for you know you the customer. And then this big blue right here is your tax signal, and like I just said, you know just stated, um, you could either splice in or depin, whichever works best for your application or whichever works best for you. So yeah, guys, that's a that's a full little schematic breakdown of the uh, kit that I sell and uh, what I offer as well as uh, you can see the quality of the work the quality of the work is I mean it it speaks for itself um, just trying to get this product pushed out there get the name put out there and uh, yeah so that's that guys uh, these allergies have been messing me up sorry if I'm a little you know stopped up but uh, anyways you got that all done um, let me show you all exactly um, something real quick so I got that yep representing high boost that's me hell yeah but anyways I want to show you all exactly uh, the inside of the uh, ECU what everything's supposed to look like so this is the ECU right here so this is the controller you get uh, soldered onto the uh, FC1 board I don't know if y'all can see down there it says FC1 okay the controllers right here you run two two wires to your A21 and A25 which is a uh, um, signal and power right so that's that and then I have to cut the hole I have to cut the hole right here, cut the hole, boom, boom, and then I have to drill the hole for the uh, stabilizer screw, which sits right there. And, yeah, that's that's pretty much that whole kit, guys. Um, also, uh, what I'm going to be probably uh, making here pretty soon are some uh, solid billet uh, bushings. Either they're going to be made out of a 6061 billet aluminum, 
or probably some hard Kevlar carbon fiber material for your uh, shift linkage. I'm not sure yet. I'm uh, talking to my machinist. Actually, one of my buddies that I grew up with in high school, he's a, he's a CNC machinist right now. And uh, that's what I've been trying to do. Also, if y'all want to convert over to uh, push lock lines instead of a uh, hose barb, which is your regular, you know, T-style fittings that you use for like uh, all your vacuum lines, um, I also sell that stuff as well. I sell a bunch of uh, push lock fittings. Um, my race car has nothing but push lock fittings. Um, my buddy, my buddy uh, that I'm building the motor for, we're converting his stuff over to a bunch of push lock fittings. Um, so I think it's a lot easier to do. So for those of y'all that don't know, these are push lock fittings. You just push in, pull them out, and then you push them, and they lock back in. Same thing is right here. I'm running all these push lock fittings um, on my way or on my blow off valve. I'm running these fittings. Um, all these fittings right here on the back of my uh, on the back of my intake manifold. They're all push lock fittings. It makes the world a lot easier instead of having to deal with all them hose barbs and hose barbs are hard to pull on and they're just they're just hard they're a pain in the ass so if y'all want to convert over to some push lock fittings i sell those as well the kit the kit that i sell it's like i said you know it's a damn good kit we make you know everything in house so uh yeah guys if y'all like this video give it a thumbs up catch you on the next one hit that bell to subscribe hit me in the comment section let me know what you think about everything catch you on the next one guys peace